It's a story about a melodeon player, but I can only tell the story if I happen to have near me a very fine melodeon player. Hey. Got one here in the shape of Bill Johnson. Hey. A very fine melodeon player, if a little vain. <laughs> a melodeon player not unknown in the music pubs of East Suffolk. Pubs like the Blacksall Ship, the Butley Oyster, and the Tunstall Green Man. A very fine melodeon player, a popular man, because if folks fancied a little polka around the bar, as they often did in those days, and I'm expecting Terry Davy to grab my wife over there and show you exactly how that used to go, <laughs> then he could play them a polka. Old Joe, the boat's going over. Should be dancing, come on. You, That was your opportunity to dance and you missed it. And a little later on, when people had drink taken, if they thought they could dance a jig, now it's a very funny thing, you know, but when people have drink taken, they always think they could dance a jig. <laughs> then he could play them a jig. And a little bit later on, uh, towards leaving time, if they found something a little bit more smoochy, <laughs> he could even turn in an old-time waltz. Altogether a popular uh, musician in pubs such as this one. But there was one group of people he wasn't so popular with, because East Suffolk, along with Dartmoor, and the west coast of Ireland, is one of the places where if you're lucky, you can find the tradition of step dancing, hard shoe tap dancing. And the step dancers, they like to dance to dotted hornpipes. And our hero, no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't get his fingers around the dotted hornpipes. Go on. Well, wouldn't there be some bruised ankles and broken toenails in the Blacksaw ship? when he tried to play them a step dance tune. So consequently, whenever he walked into a pub, all of the couple dancers would cheer. Hey! And all of the step dancers would groan. It's all right, there's a few step dancers in tonight. <laughs> and it almost got so bad that he stopped going to the pub. But it never got quite that bad. One day, he was on his way to the Blacksaw ship with his melodeon under his arm, and he just came to that crossroads on the edge of the village, a crossroads that says Tunstall in one direction, uh, Snape in the other direction, and Blackstall in the other direction. But it's a very strange crossroads, really, isn't it? And there, leaning on the signpost, was this strange figure with two little horns on the top of his head <laughs> and a bit of a tail sticking out of the back of his trousers. Well, our hero thought, he's not a local. <laughs> An old Nick. Old Scratch, the devil himself. So that's who it was. He stepped forward, he said to the melodeon player, Ha! He said, You're the melodeon player who can't play the step dance tunes, aren't you? And our hero admitted that he was. Right, says Nick, sign me contract, and when you get to the ship tonight, you'll be able to play the step dance tunes as long and as fast as you like. So being a vain creature, and without reading the small print, he whipped out his biro and he signed the devil's contract. You know you should always read the small print. And he tore the top copy off and gave it to our hero, put the other copy in his back pocket, and the two of them parted company. So our hero carried on up the road to the Blacksville Ship Inn. And when he walked into the door, all of the couple dancers cheered. Yay! And all of the step dancers groaned. Now, as soon as he appeared at the door, a pint of beer was handed across the bar. Well, I should tell you, that pint of beer came from Jim, the landlord. Now, I'll tell you about Jim, the landlord of the Blacksaw ship. He was an American until he passed away about five years ago or so, I should think now. Now, Jim was left in Blacksaw after the Vietnam War. Some were left in Saigon. Some got back to the States. But Jim was left in Blacksaw. <laughs> where he remained, the landlord of the ship in for many a long year, and he always looked after us, musicians, storytellers <laughs> and singers. Well, am I right, Terry? Yeah, there he was, Jim, a, a fine man. Anyway, our hero sat next to the bar, because melodeon players 
normally sit next to the bar because that's where the free drinks are coming from. <laughs> so but I know this Melodian player's got to drive later on. That's why we're not handing him. Our hero drank that pint of beer down in one. You can mime it. <laughs> a few minutes later, a voice from the end of the bar called for a little dance tune. So he thought he'd open his account with a little Suffolk polka. Oh, Joe, the boat's going over. And I do expect you all, some of you at least, to dance. Did the trick for another pint of beer was handed over the bar. Again, our hero drank it in one. <laughs> a little bit later, a voice from over by the door called for a step dance tune. Now, it could have been Jeffrey Ling and it could have been Kenza Diaper, both step dancers who danced many a time in this very bar. One of them called for a step dance tune. And our hero thought, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And he ripped into a step dance tune as though the very hounds of hell were yapping at his heels. And they were up to dance. Come on then, Simon. took their place. Have we got another one? Simon Ritchie there. And so it went on till well after closing time. And it was the best night they'd ever had in the Black Soul ship. And that's saying something I can tell you. A little bit after midnight, Jim the landlord, never the one to break up a good session, announced that he was tired and he was going to bed. But he would leave the till open so folks could serve themselves. Because it used to be like that in the Blacksaw ship in the old days. Well, eventually the couple dancers, they drifted off home. And the step dancers, they drifted off home. To all that was left was our hero sitting in the corner of the bar, completely forgetting his meeting at the crossroads, and still ripping out the step dance tune for all he was worth. <laughs> Another one, Simon. Come on, Simon, go on. Jim the landlord came down in the morning. There was no sign of the melodeon. There was no sign of the melodeon player. But in the corner of the bar where he'd been sitting, there was a scorch mark on the floor. And in the middle of that scorch mark, a charred, screwed up piece of paper. And next to that piece of paper, a brand spanking new jukebox. <laughs> Now that jukebox, it can play country and western, it can play punk, it can play rock and roll, but it's never ever been known to play a step dance tune. <laughs> and that is why to this day, if you go to any pub in Suffolk, you're far more likely to find a jukebox than you are a melodeon player. <laughs> and that's how the devil's music came to Suffolk. <laughs>